Day number four of the 12 days of MLB rankings is finally here. And of course, you guys know what it's going to be. We got shortstops today. I ranked the best shortstop from every team in Major League Baseball going into the 2024 season. Whew, I know you guys are going to be mad about some of the ones on today's video. So before you get to typing in the comment section down below, remember to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on the rest of the rankings. Drop a like on the video. And I know third base is normally the fourth day, but I just kind of messed up and did shortstop first. Get over it. You'll get third base tomorrow. Without further ado, let's start talking about these shortstops. Getting the shortstop started at number 32. I've got a lead miss. Diaz shortstop of the Oakland A's. Yeah, I don't know. I was kind of surprised to see that this guy right now is their projected starter at shortstop. They just simply have to get someone better. I can't imagine they rock with him this year, but that's who we've got for right now. Ledmus Diaz did not play well last year. 109 games, four homers, 20 doubles, 24 RBIs, hitting 229 with a 280 on base, 337 slugging, and a 616 OPS for an OPS plus 76. He's not very good defensively at the position. I don't know. It's like him or Nick Allen. Like, who cares? Both going to probably be here towards the bottom. Next up at number 31, I've got Paul DeYoung of the Chicago White Sox. Man, I like really want Paul DeYoung to be better. His bat at times has been good, and he does have a pretty good glove at shortstop, but last year was just another nightmare season. Really hasn't been good at all since like 2019 even. 14 homers, 38 RBIs, 207 average, 258 on base, 355 slugging, and a 612 OPS for an OPS plus at 66. He played on the Cardinals, played on the Blue Jays, played on the Giants. None of them were particularly good. Not really feeling great about how he's going to look for the White Sox this Getting the top 30 started at number 30, I've got Ahmed Rosario, not currently signed to a team. Ahmed Rosario hopped between the Guardians and the Dodgers last year, ended up not having an impressive year at all. 142 games, 6 homers, 25 doubles, 8 triples, and 58 RBI, stealing 15 bases, hitting 263 with a 305 on base, 378 slugging, and a 683 OPS for an OPS plus at 89. Rosario is still really young, only 28 years old, and he has gone to driveline this offseason. So there's a world where he finally learns how to hit at a consistent level, was a former top prospect, still a really good athlete. I don't think you're completely done on a guy like Ahmed Rosario yet, who is only 28, but based on what we've seen right now, got to put him towards the bottom. Coming in at number 29, Cleveland Guardians current shortstop, Brian Rocchio. Yeah, Rocchio doesn't really profile much as a hitter at the major league level, but he will always be a very competent shortstop at the major league level at the worst. He got to play in 23 games last year as a 22-year-old, did not yet get his first home run, six doubles, eight RBIs, hitting 247 with a 279 on base, 321 slugging, and a 600 OPS for an OPS plus at 60. At shortstop this year, you'll probably see a just group of Brian Rocchio, Gabriel Arias, Tyler Freeman, and whoever else the Guardians want to rock there this season, maybe Jose Tena. But anyway, you slice it, not really looking too hot this year. John Birdie of the Miami Marlins is up next as the 28th best shortstop in Major League Baseball. This really isn't fair to John Birdie because he is a utility man. But because of how the Marlins lineup looks right now, he's their projected shortstop. Now, I will say he had a career season last year, 133 games, 7 homers, 16 doubles, 33 RBIs with 16 stolen bases. Actually, kind kind of surprising he stole way less than he has in the past for a guy who stole 41 bases in 2022 weird 294 average 344 on base 405 slugging and a 748 ops for an ops plus at 103 again at shortstop eh, not so much value but as a utility player he is really solid good athlete decent player just not gonna rank highly at shortstop for the 27th best shortstop in major league baseball gonna head down to the tampa bay rays and talk about taylor walls due to off the field issues uh, taylor walls is now gonna be the starter for the rays at shortstop and it is a considered downgrade. Taylor Walls is going to be fine defensively, but at the plate, there just really isn't that much going on here. Last year, played in 99 games, 8 homers, 12 doubles, 36 RBIs, 22 stolen bases, low average, low on base, very low slugging, gave him an OPS at 638 for an OPS plus at 79. There's just not a lot of ceiling here with Taylor Walls, but he's a competent major league shortstop. Ooh, down quite a bit here. Someone who's due for a bounce back, though, that's going to be Tim Anderson, not currently signed to a team. Tim Anderson had an abysmal year, and honestly, I felt bad for him. There was reports about how terrible the White Sox locker room was, how Tim Anderson really couldn't get any of the help he needed, and it showed in his play, 123 games, he hit one home run, 18 doubles, 25 RBIs, hitting 245 with a 286 on base, 296 slugging, like what? 582 OPS for an OPS plus at 60. It was an embarrassingly bad year for Tim Anderson, I think you just gotta throw this one out the window, start fresh, go to a new team, because the White Sox just weren't it, but for a guy who struggled at the plate and has never really been a great defensive shortstop, I did have to drop him quite a few spots. Getting the top 25 start at number 25, I've got Cardinals young shortstop Mason Wynn. Mason Wynn looked pretty horrible in the 37 games he played last year, only having four extra base hits, two of which were home runs, hitting 172 with a 230 on base, 238 slugging, and 467 OPS for an OPS plus of 29. Crazy small sample, not going to hold it against him too much, 
but the quality of contact was a little bit concerning for a guy who is smaller in size. He has tore up the minor leagues before, so there's definitely a good hitter somewhere inside of Mason Wynn. It just looks like maybe that power might be questionable at this point. Cannon of an arm at shortstop, though. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and put him in the top 25. For the 24th best shortstop in Major League Baseball, got to shout out my boy Ezekiel Tovar of the Colorado Rockies. Now, I expected Tovar to be better, and I still think there's a lot of room for growth. He was only 21 years old last year, played in 150 games, was fantastic defensively at the position at the plate there needs to be improvement. Counting numbers wise, not bad. 15 homers, 37 doubles, 73 RBIs, but in Coors, of course, so you take everything with a grain of salt. And when you hit 250 in Coors with a 287 on base, 408 slugging, and 695 OPS, doesn't really grade well. So Ezekiel Tovar did things well last year, like defensively and just extra base hit wise, but need to see him become a more consistent player. Next up at the number 23 spot, I've got Geraldo Perdomo, shortstop for the Arizona Diamondbacks. I think he's a little bit on the hot seat with Jordan Lawler being called up towards the end of the season. Lawler could eventually take over this position but as of right now it seems like it's probably gonna be Geraldo Perdomo's at this current moment and to be fair he was an all-star last year was about a league average hitter with a pretty decent glove at shortstop he's a very very just overall average player someone you'd like to have on your major league roster but maybe not playing every day or if he is hitting ninth in your lineup which is kind of what Perdomo did one thing you'll say about Perdomo he's an on-base machine had a 13% walk rate last year and only struck out 17% of the time little to no power little to no extra base hits there's not much else going for him there but overall he's a well-rounded player and the fact that like he's major league quality Whew, talk about another guy dropping and dropping at number 22 Javier Baez of the Detroit Tigers I mean what is going on with Javi Baez obviously he still plays a pretty good shortstop like he is a good glove has a great arm but yeesh at the plate last year that's the worst season we've seen him ever have 136 games he hit nine homers 18 doubles four triples and 59 RBIs the slash line's embarrassingly bad though 222 average 267 on base 325 slugging for a 593 OPS and an OPS plus at 62. His two years with the Tigers have been a nightmare, but the Tigers started to play a little bit better baseball towards the end, and I'm hoping that when he gets back into a winning environment, hopefully this season, that Javier Baez will be able to bounce back, because he's not this bad. There's no way. Just missing on the top 20 at number 21, Giants projected starting shortstop right now, Marco Luciano. Despite having a very similar name to me, Mark Luino, Marco Luciano, uh, we are not related, and Luciano right now projects to be that everyday starter at shortstop for the Giants, and I kind of like it. We didn't see much of him in his 14 games. I don't even really want to read out the stats. I mean, like, the slash line is unimpressive. But he's been a top prospect for a few years now. There's definitely some real pop in that bat. And I just tend to trust the Giants' player development right now with what they're able to do with Major League quality players. And Marco Luciano definitely is. So maybe I'm being a little aggressive here putting him at number 21. But I'm kind of banking on the fact that his bat's going to wake up. And he might pop off this year with, like, a guy like Matt Chapman, hopefully, at third base for the Giants to give him some help defensively. Getting the top 20 start at number 20, Angels shortstop, Zach. Zach Neto. Big fan of Zach Neto ever since his days as a Campbell Camel. He's a really fun player. I think he's got a great hit tool. Last year, we only saw him play in 84 games due to injury, but they were pretty decent. Nine homers, 17 doubles, 34 RBIs, hitting 225 with a 308 on base, 377 slugging, and 685 OPS for an OPS plus at 86. I expect to see Neto improve upon those numbers this upcoming season. There was a lot of good things that he did. I want to see him drive the ball a little bit more, but overall, I do believe in Zach Neto, former first round pick back in 2022. He was a beast at Campbell. He's got a great swing. Let's see what he can do in a full season. Maybe a little aggressive here, but at number 19, I'm going to go with Trevor Story of the Boston Red Sox. I'm still not giving up on Story in Boston. I won't do it. We haven't seen him be healthy yet. I feel like when he's healthy for a full season, he's going to take full advantage of that green monster. He is too good to be this bad, kind of like Javi Baez. And the glove has always been good too. Had some weird injury stuff. Just get healthy and he should be solid. We'll say though, he's basically played a full season for the Red Sox in 137 games the last two years. 19 homers, 30 doubles, 80 RBIs with 23 stolen bases. The slash line bad though 227 287 398 and 685 for an 86 ops plus but he's been hurt one more year trevor is what you got for me let's see what you can do for the 18th best shortstop in major league baseball i'm gonna go with yankees young shortstop anthony volpe volpe jersey kid nice had a pretty good rookie year i mean there were definitely some ups and downs probably a few more downs than there were ups but i like what i saw from him in terms of just like guts at the position defensively he was way better than we thought he was going to be at shortstop that while it was definitely streaky when it was hot you could see the potential there and he did finish with 20 homers, 20 doubles, and 20 stolen bases as a rookie with the Yankees. Slash line, though, again, not really that impressive. 209 average, 283 on base, 383 slugging, and a 666 OPS for an OPS plus 81. I expect now with a much better lineup, Anthony Volpe's numbers are going to go up. 
you're a fancy baseball player, I keep my eye on Volpe. If they hit him at the top of the order in front of Judge, Soto, and those guys, he could be pretty useful. For the next shortstop at number 17, I'm going to go with Braves starting shortstop Orlando Arcia. I still don't know how Orlando Arcia made the all-star team over Francisco Lindor. Doesn't make any sense, but I digress. Arcia is completely fine. He's pretty solid defensively at shortstop at the plate. He is league average. For the Braves team, it works perfectly because he hits ninth or eighth or wherever he hits, and he doesn't make this team any worse. He makes them just a little bit better. 17 homers, 25 doubles, 65 RBIs with a 264 average, 321 on base, 420 slugging, nice, and a 641 OPS for an OPS plus at 98. Arcia really is just like a fine player. That's exactly what he is, and that's why he's 17. Right at the halfway point in today's video at number 16, I'm going with Gavin Lux of the Los Angeles Dodgers. The last time we saw Lux play was in 2022, and he gave us some really encouraging signs. 129 games, 6 homers, 20 doubles, 7 triples, and 42 RBIs, 276 average, 346 on base, 399 slugging, and a 745 OPS for an OPS plus at 109. Of course, coming back from a major injury that he got in last spring training, but seems like he's going to be the everyday shortstop right now for the Dodgers going into the season, and in that lineup, I think anything can happen. I loved what I saw the last time we saw him. I loved what we saw last spring training before he got hurt. I got some faith in Gavin Lux here. For the 15th best shortstop in Major League Baseball, going to head to the nation's capital to talk about Paul Christopher Abrams, or better known as CJ. Towards the end of the year, CJ Abrams really got hot. It was a tale of two halves for him. First half of the year, finished with like a 690 OPS, not much power. In the second half, the power really started to show up. Finished with a 734 OPS. You started to get glimpses as to why he was such a highly touted prospect. He's only 23 years old, and while maybe the ceiling has come down a little bit, I think the floor has definitely started to rise more. Finished the year with 18 homers, 28 doubles, 6 triples, and 64 RBIs with 47 stolen bases, hitting 245 with a 300 on base, 412 slugging, and a 712 OPS for an OPS plus at 95. Great athlete, good player. I expect Abrams to be even better next year. Despite only playing in 9 games, I'm moving O'Neill Cruz up to the number 14 spot for the upcoming season. It just feels like, one, there's just not a lot of great shortstops right now in baseball, and two, I feel like O'Neill Cruz has shown us enough to believe that he's going to be able to be an impact bat this season for the Pirates. The last time we really saw him play was 2022, where he finished with a 108 OPS plus defensively. He's a little all over the place. The glove is interesting. He obviously has a cannon of an arm, can make plays that most people can't because he's six foot seven and throws the ball at 110 miles an hour from short. Obviously crushes baseballs. I'm going to bump him up here to 14 simply on projections and the fact that like he's a freak of nature, probably going to be pretty good this year. Speaking of another freak of nature, one spot ahead of O'Neill Cruz at number 13, Ellie De La Cruz. La Cocoa did not play well, honestly, last year. Like, outside of that hot start, he got exposed. But, man, when Ellie De La Cruz is going and looking good, he is just so much fun to watch. He's a disgusting player. And even still, in 98 games, 13 homers, 15 doubles, 7 triples, 44 RBIs with 35 stolen bases, hitting 235 with a 300 on base, 410 slugging, 710 OPS for an OPS plus of 89. None of those numbers on the slash line side jump out to you, but you're looking at a guy who could project for 30 homers and like 60 stolen bases a year. Very similar to what the MVP had this past season. So like, I'm not saying Ellie De La Cruz is one of the best players in baseball just yet, but he clearly has the potential to get there one day, and I think he's going to improve next season. At the number 12 spot, sneaky the same spot as last year, Jeremy Pena. I think we know what Jeremy Pena is going to be. Going to be a league average hitter with a really solid glove at the position. Now, one thing to say, he cut down the strikeout rate, basically doubled his walk rate almost to 7%, and the strikeout was down to 20. Those are encouraging signs for Jeremy Pena. I think he probably got a little overhyped because of the World Series MVP, Rookie of the Year, Gold Glove kind of scenario that happened in 2022, but he still is a very solid player. Again, great glove at the position, and in that Astros lineup, he does exactly what they need, so he's not going to be like the fun or sexy pick by any means, but I think he deserves to be right outside the top 10. And then just missing on the top 10, at number 11, I've got Willie Adames of the Milwaukee Brewers, another guy who had a disappointing year at the shortstop position, like almost everybody did. But we've seen Willie Adamez at his peak in the past before, and you're looking at a guy who could be a 30 homer, 30 double, 100 RBI player. Pretty solid at the shortstop position defensively. Even in a down year last year, still 24 homers, 29 doubles, 80 RBIs. Finished with an OPS plus at 95. So you definitely expected more out of him, but I'm not going to completely crush him just yet because of a down season. Getting the top 10 started at number 10, Carlos Correa of the Minnesota Twins. Had to drop Correa down a bit. He had an awesome 2022 season with them, but 2023, not so much. Not very good. He hit into 30 double plays, so that just tells me he really wasn't feeling great athletic-wise. 18 homers, 29 doubles, 65 RBIs, 230 average, 312 on base, 399 slugging, and 711 OPS for an OPS plus at 94. The glove was not particularly good either at shortstop. I think this was the concern some of these teams had with the medicals with Carlos Correa. Like, is that ankle a problem? He played in 135 games, but they weren't very good. So yeah, I had to drop Carlos Correa down a few. Disappointing season in Minnesota, but he's still too good to not be that good. Technically the biggest riser in today's video, at 
at number nine, J.P. Crawford of the Seattle Mariners. What a year from J.P. Crawford. Absolutely phenomenal. I almost want to clap it up for him. Led the American League in walks with 94. Hit 19 homers, 35 doubles, 65 RBIs. A guy who went to driveline last offseason, and it completely showed. Way better. 266 average, 380 on base, 438 slugging, and an 818 OPS for an OPS plus at 131. Almost carried the Mariners to the playoffs. Defensively, though, weirdly, wasn't great. So I don't know what that was all about. I'm going to just consider him still as a plus glove now with a plus bat. That's definitely a top 10 shortstop. If you're sleeping on JP Crawford, it's time to wake up. This dude is legit good. Sticking in the same spot as last year, Toronto Blue Jays shortstop, Bo Bichette. Yeah, Bichette defensively pretty horrendous, but at the plate, of course, he still mashes. 20 homers, 30 doubles, 73 RBIs. Not as high of counting stats as we had seen in previous years, but he did miss a few more games. 306 average, 339 on base, 475 slugging, 814 OPS for an OPS plus at 123. Bo Bichette's just a really good player. Only 26 years old next year. You expect big things out of him want to see him improve defensively if he's really going to stick at shortstop for the long haul but still at the end of the day Bo Bichette's pretty sick another guy at the exact same spot as last year number seven Dansby Swanson the Chicago Cubs offensively dropped off from what we saw in Atlanta in 2022 and that's understandable first year in a new city in a new stadium you got to kind of learn how to play there but wow defensively he was still phenomenal arguably the best defensive shortstop in baseball last year if not the number one 147 games 22 homers 25 doubles 80 RBIs with a 244 average 328 on base 416 slugging and a 744 OPS for an OPS plus at 99. We saw him eclipse the 10% walk rate, which was really nice to see. And with that glove and that bat being just league average at worst, Dansby's a really good player. I like that I can appreciate him a little bit more now that he's not a brave. Just outside the top five at number six, going to go with Xander Bogarts of the San Diego Padres. Bogarts had a weird season. He was ice cold in the first half, a 731 OPS. Started making you think like, oh no, what did the Padres do giving him this major contract? But in the second half, he got incredibly high. Uh, nine homers, 17 doubles in 71 games, hitting 321 with a 364 on base, 493 slugging for an 857 OPS. More of the Xander Bogarts we expect. Overall in the year, he still finished with 19 homers, 30 doubles, a 790 OPS for an OPS plus at 120. And we did see him improve a little bit defensively at the position, but his main thing is his bat and it wasn't as good as it's been in the past. So I had to drop him down one spot, especially with how good this next group of shortstops has been. Getting the top five start at number five, I've got Gunnar Henderson of the Baltimore Orioles. I know Jackson Holiday could be the shortstop Stop, but until he plays a game, I'm going with Gunner here. And I mean, he is a top five shortstop in the game. Rookie of the year, was awesome at the position, got MVP votes, won the Silver Slugger. In 150 games, Gunner hit 28 homers, 29 doubles, nine triples, and 82 RBIs with 10 stolen bases, hitting 255 with a 325 on base, 489 slugging, 814 OPS for an OPS plus at 125. Yeah. Gunner mashes, looked good at the position. There's nothing not to like about Gunner Henderson. He's an absolute stud. He's only 22 years old. The sky is the limit. Part of that young, amazing core. I had to throw him in the top five. He's probably going to end up being a third baseman at some point this season. But right now with Jackson Holiday in the minors and Gunner looking as good as he did last year, yeah, I'm putting him in the top five at short. Dropping down a few spots despite saving his season, I'm going to go with Trey Turner of the Phillies at number four. Trey Turner, another tale of two seasons for him. First half was, I mean, just an absolute nightmare. Turner had a 687 OPS the first half of the season. Second half of the season was out of control good, like what we've seen from Trey Turner in the past. 292 average, 348 on base, 554 slugging, and a 902 OPS. He was crazy good. The home and away splits were drastic, hit way better at Citizens Bank Park, probably because of standing ovation, or the fact that it's a band box, but I did have to bump him down a little bit. Shortstop wasn't as solid as he's been in the past, and at the plate, he did take a step back, so I have to drop him back a little bit, but I wouldn't be surprised if Trey Turner returns to that MVP caliber form this upcoming season, because it's seemed like he started to figure something out in the second half when Philly fans started being nice to him. Big jump up here at number three, we've got Bobby Witt Jr. of the Kansas City Royals. Yeah, I'm totally drinking the Bobby Witt Kool-Aid. Another guy who I believe went to driveline last offseason and just completely changed his game, especially defensively, became one of the best defensive shortstops in baseball last year. Was making silly plays. And at the plate, pretty incredible as a 23-year-old in Kansas City. 30 homers, 28 doubles, 11 triples, and 96 RBIs with 49 stolen bases, hitting 276 with a 319 on base, 495 slugging, and an 813 OPS for an OPS plus at 120. Still doesn't walk a lot, under 6% walk rate, but cut the strikeout rate down to 17.4%. With all those improvements and being so young, that got him a 7th place finish in the MVP voting on a horrible Royals team. Yeah, Bobby Wood Jr. is legit. He's got to be inside your top three right now. Missing out on the number one spot, I'm not going to say just because the guy in number one clearly deserves it, but Francisco Lindor of the Mets, definitely the second best shortstop in baseball right now. Defensively, elite, arguably the best glove at the 
entire position. And at the plate, won a silver slugger in the National League. He still can rake, finished top 10 inside the MVP voting for a second straight season. 31 homers, 33 doubles, 98 RBIs with 31 stolen bases. So a 30-30-30 season from Francisco Lindor playing premium defense at shortstop. 254 average, 336 on base, 470 slugging, 806 OPS for an OPS plus at 120. If there is a single Mets fan in the comment section who's going to complain about what this guy did the last two years, I'm going to have to fight you. You can't be this stupid. This guy is elite at the position. He's disgusting. He's exactly what we've paid for. And he is one of the best shortstops in all of Major League Baseball. It's not even close. Not debatable. Of course, though, coming in at number one, this isn't debatable either. It's Corey Seager. Corey Seager only played in 119 games last year and finished second in the MVP voting. 33 homers, 42 doubles, the most in the American League. Like, what? 96 RBIs, hitting 327 with a 390 on base, 623 slugging, and a 1013 OPS for an OPS plus at 170. This dude was out of control good. Obviously won the World Series, was huge for them in the World Series as well. He won his second World Series MVP. When you hit like that, I honestly do not care how you play the shortstop position. Like, that bat is one of the best in baseball. It makes you one of the best players regardless. But even still, he had a positive OAA last year. Oh, Corey Seager is just so good. The Rangers have made such good contract decisions. Seager and Simeon up the middle. This guy is elite. He's the best shortstop in the game. Ooh, so there it is. The shortstop rankings legitimately might be the spiciest ones that we have done so far. I'd love to know your opinions down in the comment section below. Did I put my boy Lindor too high? Are you going to tell me how biased I am? Because you're wrong. That one I'll fight you about. Corey Seager, Lindor, Bobby Wood Jr. That's the definitive one, two, three. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it, as well as subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the rankings coming at you. Follow me on all my social media at Giraffe Mark. Links are in the description. And that's where I'll wrap it up. You guys know the drill from here on out. This will be a link to the playlist for the 12 days of MLB rankings. And this will be the second base rankings or the most recent rankings upload that we have. So click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys so much for the amazing support. Keep it up. And I will see you tomorrow for the third base rankings. Bye.